Welcome back to the county seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today, instead of a roundtable, we've been spending a great deal of time going into detail about jail funding. We have covered why jails are funded the way they are, how the state has at times complicated the issue, and most importantly, how jail funding affects you in your daily life. Believe it or not, it's a big impact and you should be paying attention to it. When a judge sentences a person for a felony, they have a couple of options. For longer term sentences and heinous crimes, the judge will sentence the defendant to the state prison. If the crime isn't too serious, the judge can grant probation. However, the judge also has an intermediate option to send the defendant to a county facility for up to a year. When a judge chooses that intermediate option, the county jails get the prisoner whether they want them or not. This is a separate program called Condition of Probation, and that program is appropriated and funded by a separate stream of revenue. The problem here is that the program is continually underfunded by the legislature, leading Utah's counties to foot the bill on prisoners that the counties feel belong to the state. A decade ago, the state and the counties made a deal that the state prisoners sent to county jails in this manner would be funded half by the state and half by the county. This was acceptable to both parties and quickly ratified by the legislature, but almost immediately the county began running into problems. Too many inmates and too few dollars. So, you know, shuffling them around just really changes the burden. And the current uh, status of the COP uh, issue is, is really a fundamental uh, debate about who's responsible for uh, these particular, this particular subset of inmates. And the question is, is it a county responsibility wholly, is it a state responsibility wholly, or is it a joint responsibility, which is the current status? And if it's deemed to be a joint responsibility, then the state really has to find the revenues to pick up their piece of the, this, this issue. Every time we've done this funding, we've always said subject to appropriations. So I haven't had much trouble in the past when we've given the money to, to help out counties on this when, when we haven't been under such budget stri stress as we've been the last while. Now I have a really a difficult time when counties come to me and say, you need to reimburse us for the jail reimbursement on this, on this issue. When I see at the time, we're threatening closing a pot at the Utah State Prison. They are state prisoners because they have committed a felony we have to pay something on that. But the other part of it is most of these prisoners, all, all these prisoners, were arrested in the county that they committed the crime or in the community that they committed the crime, unlike the contract prisoners who are brought in. So there is, there is a need for the counties and the cities to pay part of that cost. I think the 50% is fair. The counties would live with that. We're saying, hey, 50% of it's our problem, 50% of it's yours, but we can't even collect 50% that's theirs. The money just never seems to be there because there is a fundamental debate on the Hill. There are legislators that believe that this is solely a county responsibility. They would rather shed themselves of the, the even the 50% negotiated settlement that occurred a decade ago and just say, they were arrested in your county, they're charged in your county, they're convicted in your county, even though it's through third district court, a state court, who cares, they're your guys. The courts are putting them in, in a county facility they have no say in that, and yet they are expected, the, the citizens of those counties are expected to cover those costs. And by rights, it should be a state cost. It's almost become an entitlement program. That, you know, it's our fault, it's, you know, that we ought to take care of it. The citizens can't hold anybody accountable in that situation. They can't hold the county accountable because the county says, we don't have any choice. They go to the legislature and the legislature says, they're not our prisoners. There is a legitimate argument to be made to say this is either one entity's problem or another. The, the reality is it's a very expensive problem and the reality is is that the same inmates that are affecting our county population will inevitably affect the states or other people within the state you know if they're not dealt with. And so to that end you know we've got to get past the who's responsible we've got to figure out what we got to do with you know, in our situation, over 300 inmates on a daily basis that need to be incarcerated. The problem we have in the state, we don't print money. We only have what money we have. And so we would have to raise taxes somewhere to pay that. And I, I think the answer that I would feel more comfortable with is then let's let the state take over the jails. 
in the end, somebody has to house the inmate if the judge wants that person to have some time uh, incarcerated. Somebody has to house, which means there's a cost to somebody. And so we're kind of back to that issue of finding the appropriate resources. The funding problems under condition of probation adds yet another layer of financial problems that county jails have to grapple with. And of course, every time there's a problem, we're always told there's a solution. And that's what we're going to look at next when we come back. We'll be taking a look at what state officials, county leaders, and others throw into the mix as a potential solution to this problem. We'll be right back. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge, snowmobiling Monte Cristo, ice fishing Bear Lake, skiing the backcountry, fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. yourself in Logan, Utah. We do winter right. The issues we cover on the county seat are often so big that we can't fit them all into one half hour. Just remember to visit us at thecountyseat.tv. Thecountyseat.tv, another resource in understanding the form of government that affects you most. What are the words that describe the perfect destination? Finding them all in one place is easy if you know where to look. Millard County in the heart of Utah offers ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and nature at its most epic. Millard County, Utah. Find out what you've been searching for. 